what's the sports tour up? Well, there doesn't seem to be that much consensus. Speak to KTM and it's the 173 horsepower 1290 Super Duke GT. According to Yamaha, it's a full-dressed FJR 1300 with glove box, electric screen and heated grips. Yep, it's listed as a sports tourer on the firm's website. Well, at least we can agree on which should be launched on track. Apparently not. For reasons I still can't fathom, Yamaha opted to launch the FJR with some track sessions at the Almeria circuit in Spain. Because who doesn't want to tackle blind off-camber high-speed bends on a 292kg Tourer? But I'm being flippant, Yamaha had its reasons. Updates to the FJR include the addition of a 6th gear. Gears 1 to 5 are now shorter than they used to be, while the 6th is taller than the old 5th. Yamaha wanted to give journalists the opportunity to test the new ratios using the full 146 horsepower, except, oh, none of the straights was long enough to test 6th without changing up early. Never mind, there was another reason. To show the FJR has more sporting prowess than you might credit. And actually, while I wasn't trying to test all the gears, I found it did. The 1298cc inline 4 has the torque to drive quickly out of tight corners from about 3000 rpm and a 9000 rpm red line to reach before the next. I had most fun staying in that gear. The broad, smooth spread of torque meant it was all I needed for most of the track. Maximum lean angle is pretty impressive with a reasonable effort required to grind a hero blob. The brakes, four pot listens at the front, are pretty good too, and ABS as usual is standard. And it's got a new assist and slipper clutch. The assist part makes the lever 20% lighter to pull according to Yamaha, while the slipper bit makes back torque less likely to lock the rear wheel and unsettle the bike on aggressive downshifts. A third reason for the track session, which went on until dusk, was to show off the FJR's new optional cornering lights. Three additional LEDs on each side light up progressively as you corner, using an inertial measurement unit to sense lean angle. The idea, obviously, is to help you see around corners in the dark. The first one comes on at just five degrees of lean, except it didn't, because the cornering lights on six of the eight bikes temporarily stopped working, leading to one photo session being abandoned. Minutes later they started working again, in time for a second photo session. Yamaha hasn't given a definitive explanation. When they did work, I could see the beam spread as lean angle increased. Obviously you've got to test a sports tourer on the road too, and later on we did, and it swallowed up the straights and corners with the same sense of casual haste. It's stable and compliant, and again, the tractable engine means good progress with few gear changes. It's no slouch showing a bit of open road either. We tested the FJR 1300 AE model with optional electronically adjustable suspension as well as the cornering lights. There's an AS version that also lets you change gear and pull away without using the clutch. All versions, including the base one, are compatible with a Dainese airbag jacket system that connects to the bike. And all have three riding modes, standard, touring and sport, which alter the throttle response from smooth to even smoother. The electronic suspension has preload settings for rider, rider and luggage, rider and pillion and two people plus luggage. Damping can also be adjusted at a button push, choosing from soft, standard and hard. Hard results in less immediate fork dive under braking. With its mattress-like seat, none of the modes can make the FJR uncomfortable, but soft mode brings an executive ride quality to long straights. Put the cruise control on and the heated grips and sit back and relax. I would have been even more relaxed with a slightly taller screen. It's electrically adjustable, but only goes up to about chin height for an average height rider like me. The panniers are easy to remove and the bike still looks smart without them. One complaint about previous versions of the bike has been the absence of a top box from Yamaha's accessory range. Now the firm is introducing a 50 litre one along with a rack to fit models made from 2013 on. One complaint I've got about this FJR is that the Yamaha back badge was coming off the pannier by the end of the launch ride, which isn't really what you expect on a brand new flagship Tourer. That's what the FJR is. Not a sports tourer, but just a tourer, and one with more performance potential than its executive look and size suggest. It's got decent handling and a strong, smooth, tractable engine. It's 13299 for the base model, 14799 for the one I rode, or 15499 for the top spec AS1 with clutchless shifting. That's the lowest starting price in BMW's R1200RT at 13810. FJR prices are also the same as last year despite the updates, which means Yamaha has effectively just put some money in buyers' pockets as well as a very good tourer in their garage.